What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here once again back at Indian of Oklahoma City where they get all the cool used bikes and you can kind of see that one coming into view. 98 Softail Springer Harley Davidson, so that's right. We got ourselves the Evo engine once again, so pre-twin cam one year before it. You can see we don't have stock mufflers on board. Don't have stock tail section either. Got some LED lights in there, but a nice looking bike. This one they got up for $6,500 right now. Sweet looking bike, has some upgrades on it. You'll see that it has the upgraded headlight there on it. Pretty cool little bike, real nice and clean. Like I said, I'm not somebody who works for this dealership. I just like coming out here and riding what they got because they let me do it. But this is a really clean example of a 98 Softail Springer. I love old motorcycles. I love the classics. So we'll take a look around here. Of course, on this side, this is going to have your choke on here. A little modified petcock there. Currently, this bike has... 48,146.9 miles on it, so it has been through. You can see trip odometer there and a regular odometer. All right, been giving it a little bit of a warm up since it's kind of cold today. Let's go ahead and start it up for you guys here. All right, now that we got it started, kind of listened to it a little bit, it's fired right up. Of course, like I said, I've been warming it up since it's already cold. Good sound, good feeling on it, it appears. Really well kept up for 49 or 48,000, almost 49,000. And get you a look around here while it's running. Well, let's go ahead and mount up and take her for a ride. All right, let's take her off choke. Now she's all good. Climb up on here. Like I said, control is really simple on this one. This one doesn't have anything that's gonna be modern at all. No analog brake, no nothing. Just your simple start soft switch, starter button, right turn signal, all that. Nothing in the back. That just changes between two odometers. Sounds really good. Five speed transmission. Did not have the six speed until much later. All right, take her out here real quick. See what she's about. <laughs> Big old windscreen helps keep everything off of you. <laughs> Now one thing's for sure, when it comes to Springers, they do act a little bit differently than your conventional fork that goes up and down. Because this is more, does this, it's more up, it's more back and forth than it is up and down. So you get a little bit different riding sensation with a Springer. But it's actually a very comfortable ride. Now I will say I've never been a fan of the original Softail suspension. It's always been a little bit too much for me in the rear end or not enough, I should say, for me in the rear end. It's always been something that bounces me around and holds too tight to me. Of course, it is adjustable, but it's just harder to adjust than most of your standard suspensions when it comes down to it. Now, this bike doesn't have a tachometer, so I can't tell you how it's doing on the highway, but I can tell you it holds 60 miles an hour quite beautifully, but you can see that all Evo doing what all Evos do vibrating everything. Look at the mirror there, just constant jitters. You can't see nothing behind you but blurs and dots and everything else. And the mirror doesn't want to stay in place over there, but no big deal. That's something that classic Harleys I've always been known for. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. A little bit of vibration never hurt anybody.
and a lot of people love this Springer front end. It's a great all-time classic look, and it's something that'll never go out of style. It's something that looks timeless, and it, they ride really well. I've always been impressed with how comfortable a Springer front end is versus a traditional fork because they don't seem as harsh to me. They always, they always seem to handle broken pavement a little bit better. They always track a little bit better to me. I just like the way it feels. And to be honest, this little Springer actually does very well. It's a very flickable chassis, a little bit heavy here and there in the bar input, but to be honest, it responds just fine. I know some people do get worried about buying a bike that's now 21 years old. It's old enough to drink and it's old enough to smoke. It's old enough to do all this other stuff. But to be honest, guys, there's nothing wrong with picking up a good, clean, classic bike, especially if you know a good guy or you're good with wrenches yourself and you can keep it going. Especially because this is now $6,500 and you get a pretty cool back package here. I like the way the seat is. The seat is that hollowed out, kind of drops you down onto the bike and into it. It's got a backrest on it as well. The feet are not fully out forward. It's not a very long bike. These old Springers were not as long as the more modern soft tail chassis. And uh, you feel a little bit more crunched up on them, but it's not bad at all. Nice engine braking there. Doesn't change too much tempo there. Like I said, this is a five speed versus your six. So you'll notice that I have very, very relaxed arms. My shoulders are way down. My elbows are actually down and my arms are coming back up toward the handlebars because this bike has you sitting nice and low and into it. Feet are actually what would probably be closer to about four inches more than what a mid-mount motorcycle would be, but like I said, it's not as long as your other chassis, so it is a forward mounted bike, but mostly, mostly not that big because it's just so short. You can see my knees are coming above the tank because I'm actually a smidge too tall for this setup. But it's still overall a nice comfy bike to ride. I'm still in fourth gear here and kind of going through this construction zone. We've got nice broken pavement. Like I said, the back suspension has a lot to be desired. I can feel it punching me in the kidneys here and there. But the front suspension is going very, very well. And the other thing I always found cool about the Springer front end is just watching the suspension work. Because that's something you can't do with a modern fork. But you get to watch the springs move around, bounce around, and handle everything for you. And it's kind of cool to just see it all happening right there in, in plain sight. So it's pretty dang cool to do go over these bumps here and no big deal at all now whoever took care of this this is a very well tuned machine the carburetor and everything's doing good there's no back popping the exhaust you can rip it up drop it no back popping no nothing somebody tuned this carburetor darn well the fueling on it is super clean I mean look at that very little input Cable operated throttle, cable operated return, cable operated everything. It feels as good as a modern bike. So whoever did this tuning, I praise you. Dad gum, this is a pretty nice riding machine here. I just love the way this thing rides. It's a fantastic riding machine. I know a lot of people, well, you hate Harley because they're too old. Well, guys, let's be honest here. In the modern society, the Harley-Davidson just doesn't appeal as much as it used to because they haven't changed their technology in years and years and years, and it's hard to stomach paying that kind of price for that kind of tech. And that's where my problem with Harley-Davidson is. If they were to, to negotiate pricing a little bit better, they wouldn't be so bad. But when you're on a classic or an antique, something that you expect to be that old, to ride that way, I don't have a problem with it, especially like I said, this is $6,500 and you get a massively clean motorcycle that rides beautifully. It'll be cheap to insure, cheap to ride. Evos are still popular enough. There's a lot of aftermarket support for these machines. All right, let's do some engine braking here.
All right, engine braking is really good. When you get down to your fifth or your first gear, just remember that your spring return isn't like a modern one. It doesn't lock into place, so it'll be still pushing down and it'll still act like it's there, but it's not, so <laughs> something I gotta remember. All right, so down here, you still have your oil lights, you still have your left and right turn signal, and you have your neutral indication right there. That's all at the bottom there. But yeah, this machine rides perfectly, perfectly well. So when you're looking for a motorcycle and you're looking for your first one or you're looking for that one that can be a project or something like that, you're looking for a good riding machine, you want to be cool, you want to have a timeless look that will never grow old, this is one to look for. Like I said, you're not going to get very much that's going to be this cool under 10 grand. And that's an advantage in my opinion. And regular braking is vague, but you can see that lever is responding very well. It's just that braking today is a lot better than braking yesterday. Better brake pads, better brake materials, better rotors, better everything. But still an affirmative, good riding machine. All right, now we're going down the more broken road. Kind of wobble our way over here. You can see everything, you see that Springer bump bobbing up and down there and it's working perfectly, riding perfectly, doing a great job handling this road. Hear a little chop in my voice, but that's actually more from the rear suspension than the front. Like I said, the front, I don't know what it is. These Springers just ride a lot better than the traditional fork. I love the handlebars and everything, just nice, comfortable positioning. Get good leverage on the bars for turn-ins. Like I said, the chassis is surprisingly flickable. Real easy to get around corners. Of course, this isn't gonna go canyon carve like a sport bike, but it will hold pretty decent. It's gonna do a good job. It'll get you out there and make you have some fun. Transmission is shifting really well as well. Like I said, the only thing about these older transmissions is that I'm, I'm not used to it not locking down like these modern ones do. Where you hit first gear and you tap down, it's not gonna go down anymore. This one just continues to bounce up and down and kind of throw you off there. Of course, there's no gear indication on this bike either, so you just kind of have to take a guess, but that's fine. It teaches you how to count and feel the bike is what I've, I've you know, being that I've rode for as long as I have, never hurts to be able to count out your gears and know where you are so you don't have to look at everything all the time. It's better keep your eyes on the road. This Evo is just powering right along. Like I said, that mirror doesn't like me at all. <laughs> Likes to swing a little bit here and there. <laughs> it's just vibrating all the way through it. But it feels like a machine. It feels like it's supposed to. And this is, of course, a belt-driven motorcycle, so not as much maintenance. Like I said, you can't get a lot of bikes under 10 grand. You can't get a lot of them that's under 10 grand that's a belt drive either. And if you can find something like this for a first-time rider, it's a whole lot easier to take care of a belt than it is to take care of a chain. The only thing you really got to do on the belt is a couple of tension checks and make sure it's not fraying out on you. Once you do that, you're in good shape. You don't have to constantly lube it and loosen the axle and look at everything and all that good stuff. You just literally have to do one thing or two things with these belts. All right, getting back up to highway speed here. Bike capable of getting on highways without any problem. I mean, like I said, it's only 
only 21 years old it's not that old that old but it's still using that classic technology the evo engine being out since 84 basically so it was at the end of its lifespan we know the twin cam came and replaced the evo back in 1999 so the very next year this bike would have been a twin cam motorcycle of course they didn't carry it over at that time I just love how it burbles along. It's so happy. Happy little motorcycle. Lots of shakes, lots of rattles. But like I said, you're not gonna find a motorcycle that's that's a good for a new rider. That's like this, with this much character for the price of most of those motorcycles. This one's just bar none, one of the most fun bikes that you can buy ton of support for it still nothing to worry about you can see I'm really going over those bumps right now and like I said I the only thing I could say is that I'm not a fan of the rear suspension but this front handles everything just fine I hope you can hear that because that sounds so good. All right, back up to speed. Like I said, the handle's getting into this traffic. I know it's harder because we don't have that merge area like we used to, but it handles getting in and out of traffic just fine. Holds up well to modern standards. Good ride, man. This is a fantastic, motorcycle like I said for $6,500 you can get a pretty decent new bike that's going to be great for beginners we can get something with a whole lot of soul whole lot of character and a whole lot of looks that's for dang sure and you're gonna have a lot of fun on this one too so like I said if you're looking for something new you're looking for something old or whatever you're looking for in the first bike and you got a budget of something under 10,000 take a look for one of these like I said, this one just happens to be at 6,500 over in Indian of Oklahoma City at this time. But if you find one in your area, take a look at it. Don't hesitate and don't be shy. There's a lot of shops that will still work on these old Evos, and plus there's reliable as a hammer because they're so easy to rebuild. They're so easy to work on. They're back in the old school days where you didn't need computers. You didn't need all that extra junk just to plug in and make them work. You just simply turned a wrench or two here and there and you made it work. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog once again on this beautiful 1998 Softail Springer. If you have any questions about the Softail Springer, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer those for you. And once again, Indian Oklahoma City with the coolest used bikes that I can take for a ride. We appreciate them once again. Keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride. Hey, what's up everybody? Rabbit Hedgehog here and I want to thank you for watching our videos. If you like what we do, please smash that subscribe button, hit that bell so that way you can receive notifications when our latest videos are out. We also want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. These guys right now are out there riding with you. However, if something happens, they are not ambulance chasers. They want you to give them a call or visit their website. They're at 1-844-533-2913-247 and at lawtigers.com as well. If you're in Oklahoma and you're looking for insurance to protect your home, auto, motorcycle, or commercial, give Derek Enlow and Associates Insurance Agency a call. He's at 405-261-1010 or www.inlowinsurance.com. Also, for protecting our engines, we have Doug Crawford with USA Synthetic selling AMS oil and protecting our engines. He's at www.usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. Thank you to our partners for keeping us protected and keeping our motorcycles running strong. At any rate, thanks once again for watching. Have a great day and keep that shiny side up.